This is part two of me modifying my own generator to switch between bonded and floating neutral. Now I didn't go into details of why I did it and I didn't go into details of how I'm going to implement it because I was trying to keep that video as short as possible. If you watch my one on neutral ground bonding and a solution I present of lifting the ground in the receptacle if you have a bonded neutral generator, then you'll see all of the math and all of the work that I've done to understand how all of that works. So. Let's, part two, let's follow up. Why did I install a toggle switch to switch between bonded, down, lifted, up? Well, you see, your portable generator has the ability to be utilized all by itself, just standalone, right? And in those standalone scenarios, it must be bonded internally. That's why they're sold bonded internally. They don't know how you're gonna use it. You could just run extension cords to plug in individual appliances. In that case, it must be bonded. However, when we backfeed our electrical panel, we have a neutral ground bond in our electrical panel, and now we have one in our generator, which means we have two paths for neutral current. Remember, neutral being the difference between A phase and B phase, which means there's always current on your neutral in your home. Now, some have suggested, but what if, Richard? What if we lift the neutral accidentally because we miswired something, and I don't have that ground to be a duplicate path? Then all of a sudden, I don't have either a grounded path or a neutral path. Isn't that worse? I would argue, no, it's actually not. The reason being is if you lifted the neutral and you didn't have a complete ground path back either, then your voltage is going to fluctuate so wildly, things aren't going to work. You're going to know the problem immediately, as soon as it happens, oh, we have a problem. Are you going to hurt anybody? Not likely. You might break a few things, but these are just things. These are replaceable and you are not replaceable. If instead we have a lifted neutral and the ground is continuous, as some have suggested, that means our lifted neutral will be hidden forever. We'll never actually know that's a problem, which means we'll always have current on our grounds. All, we, all the metal surfaces will have current on them, which means they have a potential, which means they're a shock hazard. I care about people, not things. So the reason we don't want two neutral ground paths is if that neutral gets lifted, I wanna know immediately. And I don't want my redundant ground path, which is by the way illegal, but I don't want that redundant ground path to mask a more serious issue. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to utilize this generator to either connect to my home or be in a standalone portable mode. Now I got my bonding switch, lifted, bonded. It stays in the bonded position anytime I want to use it in a standalone configuration. You see, there can only be one neutral ground bond in the entire system. And if the generator is the only thing providing power, then it has to be bonded. That's why it comes that way. They don't know how you're going to use it. So I'll leave it bonded. And anytime I want to utilize it in a standalone mode, it has to be down. So it's a check that I have to take like a mental, oh, hey, make sure it's bonded. I mentioned in the video, I need to add some instructions down here. I just gotta decide how I wanna print them. So most cases, anytime it's not connected to the house, it stays bonded. When I wanna connect it to my house though, that's when things get interesting. Now it's in a lifted scenario and the bond needs to be somewhere else. That other place is gonna be my panel. So the way that this is gonna work is pretty specific in the order of operation. And I need to print some instructions in case I'm not here and I want somebody else to connect it. Those instructions will go as follows. One, place the switch in the lifted position. Two, with the generator breaker in the open position, right, the house is being powered by the utility, I'll connect my generator extension cord. And you lift that up, you push that in there, lock it in place, right? It's locked. So now this other end goes to my house. And you'll notice that on the extension cords, they have male and female intentionally. Don't, like you don't want a suicide cord. You don't want to have two male ends because you could plug it into two different sources and things could blow up. So that's why the receptacle on the house actually has a recessed male. And this is a standard extension cord. Don't modify these. They should buy them, use them, only when they're not damaged, when they're damaged, replace them. 
don't use modified chords. I know they're not cheap, they're like 50 bucks, but that's the, what you gotta pay, man. That's just what you gotta do for safety. So, now in this case, my generator's lifted. This extension cord is connected to my house. Now the generator is going to see the neutral ground bond in my panel, and only that one. At that point, remember the generator breaker is in the open position, and this is probably also gonna be in the open position. I got a circuit breaker on the generator. I start it, put it in start, or run and then start it. At that time, the generator fires up, and I need to let it warm up for a couple minutes. Then I flip this up, now power's in my house. I go inside, I turn off all of the branch breakers. That's important to do. Don't just flip mains. You wanna open all of your branch breakers first, whether the utility's there or not. Then open your main, lift your interlock, close the generator breaker. At that point, this generator is powering my panels busing. But there's no load on it yet. Now I get to turn on the circuit breakers one at a time. And that's an important just rule when you're connecting a generator to your house and your panel. One breaker at a time, one load at a time, you'll hear the generator, it's called a frequency dip. When it gets loaded, it slows down. And the controllers need to say, ah, more fuel. Same thing happens in your car, like when the air conditioning comes on and the AC clutch creates more resistance, the engine's RPM drops, even the headlights dim a little bit until the computer says more fuel and air please and essentially throttles up the engine to compensate. This needs to do the same thing. That's why you want to step your load on. So turn all the loads on and congratulations. This is running my entire house and it's doing so using the single neutral ground bond in the system that lives in the panel. When I'm done, the process is the reverse, right? Open all the breakers to unload the generator, open the generator breaker, and now the generator is no longer connected to the home, but I'm letting it run. It's important to let these things cool down for like five minutes or so. So I'm just letting this sucker run and that's fine. Then if I want, I can move my interlock, turn on my main on my panel, put my all my branch breakers back in the closed or on position, and now my home is being ran by the utility and the generator's outside just in its cool down mode. Now, I have to shut it off then before I disconnect this cord. Remember, this does not want to run unbonded. So it's still, even though the breaker's off, it's seeing the one neutral ground bond in the house. Simple as that, I turn it off, then I go through and I disconnect my plugs. And I let my generator sit someplace safely to cool down the rest of the way before I put it away for storage. And I put little labels, so if anybody grabs one of these cords, the little, this is up, but there's two of those, so just for gripping, I want to know which one's up and then what's the lock and unlock position, just in case somebody else uses it. So that's my scenario. Then when I'm done, I can leave it in the bonded position, just in case somebody decides to start it. I leave it in the bonded position normally. Uh, it's only when I'm going to connect it to my house will I lift, then connect it, then start it. That order is very specific. So overall, I did run this, by the way. I said I was going to, and I did. I ran it for a full hour with my house fully loaded on it as if my house had utility power because this is big enough to essentially power everything other than air conditioning and my electric stove in all of its modes. I can run a couple burners, no problem. So I added another hour to its life. And yeah, we're sitting pretty good. So this has worked really well. I'm glad I had a chance to explain part two of I did it, but why and what are the scenarios surrounding that. It's really important that we have that conversation. Obviously, keep the questions coming. Happy to answer them. Have a great day.